Hi, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It is the uh, latter end of July 2017. I'm standing in my side yard. There's my kitchen window. Um, my neighbor's here, my neighbor's back behind me. Uh, the bluish structure here is the shed. To my left are the Merriam berries, which are done. Uh, Gumi berry, red amity raspberries. Uh, in front of me, um, one of which has been severely damaged by the hot sunny weather is a half high blueberry. This one is in more shade, another half high blueberry. Um, uh, back behind this plant, which is gonna be the focus of our video, are high bush blueberries. Uh, so this is a plant that I wanted to discuss today. Um, it's an herb and as you can see it is um, now over seven feet tall and when I planted it last fall it was about that big. Um, so this is motherwort uh, Leonoris cardiaca. It is in the Lamiaceae so it is related to mints. Um, it's a perennial um, herb that um, sometimes can be kind of a short-lived perennial, so uh, depending on the conditions, it can go to seed fairly quickly. It puts on a tremendous amount of upright growth in the summer and then blooms in late July and August, at least here in Oregon it does. I think in, in um, hotter areas it can bloom earlier in the summer. So let's go in and take a look at this herb. So it puts out these long um, spires and then eventually it starts to bloom um, in the axles of the leaves. It puts out these little flowers. Okay. And it doesn't look like much. So you can see, here's some more flowers um, as we go up. And they it produces flowers all the way up. And it will just keep going and blooming and going and blooming for ages. I have uh, three different kinds of motherwort. I have a Siberian, a Chinese, and then um, just the regular motherwort. Um, so it has a lot of herbal uses, um, medicinal uses. So folks use it for, it's called motherwort because it's traditionally used postpartum in women. Um, it's also used for anxiety and it is used in combination with other herbs like chamomile and valerian to help um, folks who have trouble sleeping. I don't actually use it for any of those purposes. Um, I use it mostly because it is amazing bee food. One, it produces a ton of biomass, but two, it is really good bee food. Bumblebees and honeybees. So here you can see that um, the buds, they're kind of hairy. And those will all become flowers. And as we move farther down, these little inconspicuous flowers are fantastic food for uh, all sorts of native bees hoverflies, and honeybees. They all really like it. I'm always looking for a continuous succession of food for my honeybees and for any native pollinators to keep them happy all year long. Um, so because this herb flowers late in the season, uh, kind of a gap between um, a lot of herbs that bloom in early June or late May. If you cut them back, they'll rebloom again in August. But then there's this gap while they're regrowing in uh, late July where not as much uh, is blooming that is um, a good food for uh, bees. So it fills in that gap nicely. And again, it also produces a great amount of shade. So I put it here and I, I'm going to put some more in a different spot next year because it really shoots up and helps shelter the blueberries, which normally do quite well here, but when we've had such a hot, um, sunny summer, they are really prone to sunburn on the leaves and then die back. So it makes a great screen that grows up and can shelter other plants that are sensitive in late summer sun. Um, and then it will die back. Um, so it didn't die back all the way to the ground in winter, but this is kind of a sheltered location. Some of the ones I have in the front yard died all the way to the ground because we had a snowy winter. and. Um, but they have uh, re-emerged quite successfully in the spring. They are probably four and a half feet tall right now and blooming, so they're like maybe here. This one that did not die back at all um, and went through the winter being about eight or 10 inches tall um, and protected in this location is now obviously again like seven feet or more and it's just going up and up. So it's gonna continue to go up and up. So again, that is motherwort. Um, it is uh, an herb that is hard to find in nurseries. I had to start it from seed from a specialty catalog and it did quite well. A really easy to germinate, very high germination rate. Also a really um, 
high success in transplanting. So I would say 95% um, success rate in transplanting these as young plants in the fall. Um, so we'll see. Um, the, the one downside to Leonoris is that it tends to um, have the potential to get weedy because it self sows very vigorously. So you can just see all of these buds, um, which are a little prickly, by the way. Um, all of these buds that will flower and then all set fruit. And it, it's a schizocarpic um, fruit, so seed pod. So it breaks open into multiple smaller um, seed pods. So it spreads its seeds very readily. Um, so if you don't want to have it come up kind of wherever, um, it's good to cut it back before it goes to seed after it's done flowering. Alternately, you can um, bag it or collect the seeds and spread them where you want. I'm more of a fan of letting nature spread things and um, then what I do is if it comes up where I don't want it, I just yank it. It doesn't have very difficult uh, to pull uh, roots. so it's easy to rip it out if it comes out where you don't want it. Sort of like borage and nasturtium and calendula, all those things I let nature self sow it and it tends to then germinate in places where it's gonna be happiest and do well and then I just plant other things around it. If it came up right in the middle of a blueberry plant, I would yank it, um, but I'm not super worried. So let's see if I can get it to focus here. Okay, that is motherwort, Leonoris, uh, Cardiaca, member of the mint family and beautiful uh, herb and beautiful bee food. Okay, I'll be back soon. Thanks.